Every day I paint, every night I paint, you know. I was uh, traditionally like uh, trained as a designer, and like we had to do the press type and you know all the all the pictures had to be sort of specked out the size and you would just sort of tell the printer like okay this is what the picture looks like this is the size and the layout you know you had to do like tissue tissues of how it was mocked up so i think like you know that gave me a real good understanding of like doing things by hand um you know and then and then also i took lots of art classes with painting and and charcoal and stuff like that which i think was sort of the fundamentals of of what I've always been interested me with with design is is sort of doing things by hand. So it was pretty much a natural transition going from designing to painting, you know, because it, it's something that I was taught, you know. My design work funded my fine art, so I did my fine art sort of in you know when I had time and in the evenings. But it's kind of switched since then because you know I've you know because the success of my fine art's been letting me do less design work. And it's, it's more what I love, it's more what I want to do in the future, you know. So I feel like I've evolved a lot more since then. I mean, you know, when, when I do projects for other people, they, they kind of set the sort of the mood and, and, the, and the understanding of what, what needs to be done. But when you're doing stuff as you're on, on your own, you kind of need to set your own sort of standards, you know, what you want to, what you want, you want to achieve. And you know, it's, it's kind of difficult sometimes because it, it's kind of a mindset you have, I had to sort of change. You know, but now that I'm in that mindset, it, it becomes easier and easier for me. It's just, you know, it's just a way of thinking. I mean, the worst critic's always myself, you know. That's always the hardest part is to please what I want to please, you know. Never what I want to please with other people, you know. I graduated from high school in 89, so at the time computers were not really, um, for design it wasn't really, a, 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 you know, a tool. I mean, PC had some design programs and Mac had barely any, you know. And, um, you know, it wasn't, no one really thought about it back then. Everything was done by hand, you know. It's the way they sort of trained us in school. And then when I graduated, like, I met someone who had a Mac and was designing, like, you know, in the commercial world, and he taught me everything. And, uh, you know, it kind of gave me a head start. You know, I got into Macs, like, in the early 90s before people really even were messing with things. And then I started, like, meeting people, and then I started helping them, and, you know. It was a good thing for, for me, I think, at that time. A computer is still an important tool of of how I create work, you know. Sometimes I'll just paint something and it happens and it looks good, but sometimes if I get stuck on a painting and I don't know what to do with it next, you know, I might like take a picture and put it in Photoshop and try some different things on before I actually move forward. And then, you know, it helps me save time and energy. When you have a show come up, you can't really waste too much time. People want me to explain my work, I don't really want to explain my work because it takes away from the experience that the person has with the painting and I don't want to compromise that because it's, for me it's a personal thing to paint the paintings but it's also a personal thing for people to to absorb the paintings and, and, and you know, find something with, that they see is, is relevant in their life. And people sometimes bring out things and I'm like, wow that's crazy, I never thought about that but it kind of makes sense, you know, I mean a lot of my paintings I do, I, like I never really sort of plan them, they just kind of happen. Um, I mean, you know, they don't just happen, you know, but, you know, I, I, I sort of set out to just kind of do things and then, you know, the, the concepts evolve and I start to find things that are relevant within the, within the meaning of the painting that I didn't even really intend and then they end up being the titles of the painting. It's kind of a weird thing, you know, it's, I, I think it's all based on the subconscious mind, you know, things that I'm thinking in my head because, you know, I might like hear a song on the radio or hear someone giving a, um, a broadcast on the radio and I might not necessarily hear them if I'm just hanging out but when I paint and when I when I when I'm doing stuff like that I get I end up hearing like every single lyric and hearing every single like thing on the radio I, I think because I'm tuning into my, my something that my subconscious mind is recording you know and, and it's, it's kind of a strange thing it's not, it's not easy to explain I mostly worked with figurative stuff human figures and stuff but now I've been kind of experimenting with a little bit more of uh, you know nature and, and uh, different kinds of species you know, I mean, animals are always something that's interesting to me, you know, just the way they sort of, like, 
live their lives compared to the way we live our lives. So I take the analogy of, of uh, in the symbolism, in the, in the, in the natural like, um, animal world and, and sort of apply that in sort of a human-based world, you know, because I think we're sort of detached from, or we're very detached from, you know, our, sort of our natural instincts as, as from where we come like, you know, thousands of years ago. So I think there's, there's you know, there's a strong sort of uh, relationship between those two that I like to try to convey. Like the zebra's piece is sort of like, uh, you know, I, I kind of look at that as, as a symbolism for like kind of the Iraq war right now where, you know, everyone's kind of coming together <clears throat> with sort of this uh, same goal to try to do something, but nothing's really happening. Everything's sort of becoming one sort of huge cacophony of chaos, you know, if you want to, if you want to say that. So that's kind of like my, my thing behind the whole zebra stripes is like everyone's trying to have this sort of identity that they're really strong behind, whether it's like Muslim, whether it's Christianity, and then when they come together in the middle, it all, you know, after all the, all the dust settles, it's, there's really nothing's been, been achieved, you know. Well, I have a gallery, Kinsey DeForge, which was formerly a black market gallery, but, uh, you know. So when I'm not painting, I, I'm always tending to the gallery, and she's the director, my, my wife's the director, Janice, she's the director, so it sort of frees me up to just mostly paint, you know, we, but we obviously curate the shows together. Um, but it's a nice thing to have for me because, it, you know, I have a lot of friends that are artists, and I see a lot of art out there that really inspires me, and, you know, as much as I love creating art, I love supporting art, and I mean, I buy tons of art, you know, I spend a lot of my money on the paintings that I sell buying art from other artists, you know, so it's, it's kind of a cool thing because I feel like I'm kind of giving back to the, to the art community in a way, you know, not being so selfish. We've, we've shown um, a lot of people over the years, I mean, we, the gallery started in 2001, so, you know, in, in, in the course of like uh, seven or eight years we've shown like, you know, 50, 60, 70, hundred a hundred artists you know so I, I think uh, you know I, I, I think there's a lot of people right now that we show that are doing really cool stuff there's not anyone in particular I mean I if we show other people I obviously like their stuff you know I, I, I like some stuff some stuff more than others you know because it's, it's you know, when we have the relationship with the gallery it's you know um, you know it's like a business relationship so she picks some things she likes I pick some things I like you know it always comes in line some way or another but I just like the energy of the art that's that we show. You know, it's a lot of it's a lot of the younger stuff. Like you know, we just had a meeting with the the Com Collective guys from uh, from um, Ghent, and um, you know they're they're young and, and I, I feel like they have that energy that like I had when when I was when I was their age. You know, like just fuck it, let's just like create art and put stuff on the streets and do installations. And it's really inspiring to me. And it helps me like you know as an artist as I grow. You know. Mm -hmm.